He's okay. Whoa, that was exciting. So welcome to our NCIX Tech Tips episode about the Parrot AR Drone 2.0. The biggest upgrade besides the looks, the Drone 2.0 looks like sleeker and faster and sexier and more futuristic and better in every way than the Drone V1. Most of the improvements have been made under the hood. So we'll start with the 720p camera. Instead of the grainy low resolution videos and images you could take with Drone V1, Drone 2.0, now you can take HD videos without going with like a kludgy solution. Like people were running it without the hull to save weight and then they were putting like a, a GoPro on it. No longer necessary whether you're using manual piloting or the autopiloting feature enabled by its vastly superior processing power, Drone 2.0 takes great videos up in the air. They have also expanded the polypropylene hulls. They've made it more durable than the original one, which is really saying something because the original drone that I have survived some pretty significant crashes and falls without sustaining any damage or even with fairly minor damage. The crosses here, so you can see the, the structural pieces that hold the gears, uh, the motors, as well as the propellers are made of carbon fiber tubes now, which means they are incredibly strong and lightweight. The weight is very important because that's what gives the drone its 10 to 12 minute battery life up in the air in spite of the fact that there's a whole lot of stuff running off the 1000 milliamp hour battery in here including a 1 gigahertz processor, a gig of RAM, two cameras, one in the front and a low res one on the bottom to keep it from drifting as well as allow you to make uh, precision landings. Uh, what else is going on? You've got the four motors, you've got the magnetometer, you've got the gyroscope, you've got the a ultrasound sensor that controls the height. So there's a lot of stuff running off here. You got to keep the weight down in order to keep performance up and keep the battery life reasonable. Wi-Fi N capabilities gives it faster data throughput, which is what allows that higher bitrate video to be beamed to your device. So you can see a much clearer image when you're flying it around. Now, all these technological things sound great on paper, but what does it mean to the user experience? Well, here's a great example. The magnetoscope that they added allows the AR drone. So drone V1, you, you lean the phone forward, you tilt it in order to go forward. So drone V1 would always go forward if you leaned your phone forward. It would go its forward. The drone V2, drone 2.0, can actually be configured so that even if it's oriented so the drone is facing you, if you go like this, it'll still go that way because it knows what direction it's facing. The pressure sensor that it has on board allows it to maintain vertical stability that is not, you know, fly up or fall down even at heights in excess of 100 feet off the ground, whereas Drone V1 got pretty unstable with its ultrasound sensor alone. Once you got about 20 feet off the ground, it didn't really know where it was anymore. So those little tweaks, plus the fact that they've now built in functionality like in-air flips, so you can turn over the drone with the push of a button, make it much more powerful and much more exciting to use. Stay tuned and we're gonna do some usability tests with this awesome little device. So for our first trick, we're gonna be using the Transformer Pad Infinity to pilot the AR Drone 2.0 outside of line of sight. First thing I wanna show you guys before we get started though is the clarity of the camera. So this is dramatically better than AR Drone V1. In fact, we're gonna turn the brightness up so you guys can totally see what the drone's seeing. And the most impressive thing other than the image quality is check this out, go look at the screen. We're just in the warehouse at, the NC at NCIX right now. Check out the responsiveness when I move it back and forth. That's gonna make, here, I'm gonna hold this like this so you can really see what the responsiveness is like. This is several times better, sort of, you know, anecdotally, than the AR Drone V1, which I have extensive experience flying. So I'm very impressed to see that. Now, settings are pretty simple. So you go in here and you can set sort of generally whatever it is you need to do. There's a few different pages of settings. Uh, we're not really gonna change any of that. We're not gonna be using absolute control because I'm used to the more traditional style. Uh, we are using the indoor hull and we are flying indoors. So all of that's good. We do not need an altitude limit of three meters. So we are going to adjust that to maybe like uh, 10 meters. We don't need to go that high. We're in the warehouse. And other than that, we are good to take off. Okay, so there we go. So I want you guys to kind of hang with me while we fly around the NCIX warehouse here using nothing but the drone's camera 
to navigate. This is actually my first flight with the Drone V2. You can see there's a forklift. So this is of course completely safe and what I should be doing here in the warehouse. So you can see the adaptive video bit rates and uh, we're gonna just kinda increase our height a little bit so that maybe we can uh, avoid getting smoked by that thing. You know what, let's just turn around and bail on that. Let's come, come back down. You can see us here, that's me and Slick. And we're just gonna go forward now. So I am not looking at the drone at all. I am flying it 100% by staring at the screen. In fact, you can see that because even though the drone is close enough to me that I could be looking at it, you can see I'm staring down at the screen. So we're gonna go this way and go down a little bit, maybe go forward. Do, 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 do. The responsiveness makes a big difference in terms of moving it around without, uh, oops. Hey, check that out, we bounced right off it in terms of moving it around without crashing into things as much. Oh, there's Bernard. Hey Bernard. I won't hit you, don't worry, it's all good. I'm gonna go around you. <laughs> so yeah, in case you guys were wondering, we are legit in the warehouse right now. So let's go and see, there's some fractal cases right there. Uh, there's some more stuff, there's some Antec cases. So we are totally navigating out of sight now. I have no line of sight. You can even hear the air drone is quite far away. There's some thermal tape cases moving around here. And we are pretty much out of, out of easy Wi-Fi range now, I think. Oh, no, no, it's still going. Wow, the range is so much better on drone 2.0 than it was on drone 1. This is outstanding. Uh, there's a TJ07. Oh, my favorite case. And the image quality is just a hundred times better. Okay, so we're too far away. So why don't you actually, oh no, we're tethered. We can't actually move the camera, but uh, there you go. There's our out of line of sight flight. Stay tuned for more tests. Okay, so I'm gonna go get the drone just to give you guys some idea of how far away it was. It's, uh, is it another one down? Oh wow, it's way down here. So it's still hovering down at the end there because we lost the link. I'm gonna go grab it. Do, 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 do. Oh no, it landed. Never mind. It's all good. So uh, I'm about. Ah, uh, I'm running. I'm running. I'm running. And I'm back. So I'm about that far down again before we lost our link through all of these boxes and all that. So we're going to do an outside range test to see uh, what kind of straight range we can get without all these obstacles in the way. So for our outdoor range test, we're on a pretty gusty day today. If you guys can see the trees and I'm going to throw this leaf up and you're going to see that it drifts pretty far away from me. However, we did our AR Drone V1 range test on a similar day. We've got about 55% left on our battery. I'm just demonstrating the iOS app is very similar to the Android app in pretty much every conceivable way. AR Drone V2 is much easier to fly than V1 in my limited experience with it. So let's go ahead and take her for a spin. In spite of the gusts of wind, so you can see those trees moving around, AR Drone V2 is still able, see I've let go completely, to regain its hover and hold its position. You see how it's fighting with the wind in order to stay stable? I wouldn't recommend flying it on a day like this, but you can see that she can handle it. So we're gonna just go to the right, go forward. Uh-huh. Oops, there we go. All right, let's keep taking her down. So let's see how far we can go before we lose Wi-Fi range here. Look at that wind, holy smokes. It's kind of crazy to be piloting it amongst all these cars right now. Oh, there's some real gusts coming in now. Try and maintain it over the uh, concrete strip there. So you can see the Drone V2 is quite far away now. We're keeping her close to the ground because that's going to make it more stable. However, you can fly it higher up should you, uh, should you experience that desire. So I've let go now and I'm letting it hover again. But you can see we still have a good video feed here. You can see the bumpiness from the drone hovering right now. We're going to go ahead and move her forward a little bit more. There you go. 
Still going, still going. So it's about 70 meters away right now, which is pretty respectable. And it's at the point now where you wouldn't be able to pilot by line of sight anyway, because it's so small, it's just a speck in the distance. And the video just disconnected. However, we still have control and oh and the video reconnected so that's about the limit of the range that's about 70 to 80 meters away now and i'm going to go ahead and uh, go retrieve it now We learned an important lesson. Why not to uh, pilot an accelerometer based device while running? So that's why we crashed. So for our last practical test of the day, we're gonna be recording video on the drone 2.0. So in the, uh, it used to be you had to get a third party app to record. Now within the Parrot app, you just press record right here, take off the drone, and we're just gonna do a short video recording of us flying down the parking lot a little bit. Whoops, there we go. Whoa, hey ho, hey ho, there we go. All right, once again, the wind is very gusty today. So here's our little video where we're gonna kind of cruise down here and we're gonna not get blown around too much. I should stress that this is a worst case scenario for the drone too. Whereas normally you'd have a lot easier of a time flying it. And I hope I can bring it back. Hold on a second. I can still hear it. Whoa, there we go. Look at that. The whole video attached to your uh, helicopter, quadricopter thing is actually pretty practical because I could see which way it was oriented and then I was able to, uh, to recover it. So we'll bring this baby back and I think that pretty much wraps up our outdoor testing and bring it in for a landing. So basically, if you like remote control gadgets, you could do a whole lot worse than an AR Drone 2.0 for around 300 bucks because there is a phenomenal amount of technology in here compared to similarly expensive hobby grade RC craft that are just honestly not as well built not as expensive to manufacture. I mean, with the processor in here, with all of the electronics that go on, it's way more advanced than pretty much anything else out there, especially at a consumer-friendly price point. If you thought the AR Drone, the original one was awesome, then the AR Drone 2.0 is just that much more awesome. It has the same kind of accessory package with the indoor hull, the outdoor hull, the battery and the charger. Make sure you grab yourself an extra battery for longer flight times. You can have one on the charger, one in the drone ready to go. And I think that pretty much wraps it up. Thank you for checking out this episode of NCIX Tech Tips and I hope you've enjoyed it.